mode. Hi everyone. So uh, in today's webinar, we're going to discuss how we used uh, WS2 machine learners in order to predict the winners of the big game. I'm Nirmal Sananda, I'm the uh, team lead of WS2 machine learner team. Uh, in order to get started, uh, just have a look at this uh, video. Before I move into next few slides, I'd like to ask you guys to like uh, send your questions in if there are any. Like, um, just send your questions in during the uh, webinar. So uh, I'll try to answer them as and when they arise. Uh, but if not, I'll be answering them at the uh, very end of the webinar. So uh, you probably have some idea about the big game after looking at that video, yeah, but let me try to explain a bit. Uh, so the big game is uh, known as uh, American Super Bowl, uh, which is a very famous uh, sport in America. Uh, so you, know, you can say American football as well. Uh, and uh, due to the trademark issues, we couldn't use the name Super Bowl, so that's why we have named it as big game. Uh, so the American football or the Super Bowl like, uh, has three main seasons, uh, like the preseason, general season, uh, the regular season, and the uh, playoffs. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's it's an annual uh, championship that happens, uh, and it is like mainly conducted by the uh, National Football League of uh, United States. So why were we interested in it? Uh, so that's one of our like, uh, key members in our marketing team. He came up with this crazy idea after doing some analysis. Uh, so he analyzed uh, the search term Super Bowl in the YouTube and found out that uh, you know uh, the search term Super Bowl has a growth of more than five times uh, since uh, 2011. And also he found that Super Bowl <laughs> predictions has a very good uh, you know, uh, index when, when you search um, by the search terms. It has like uh, a good interest over time. Uh, so with these facts in mind, uh, we thought why, why can't we try WS2 machine learner, the predictive that we have built uh, to credit the winners of the big data, big games, uh, or the Super Bowl games. So uh, then uh, we started to uh, get into the uh, 
get into the work of like analyzing or predicting this uh, super ball. And uh, the first step was to uh, identify the data. So uh, when we analyzed the game, uh, we realized that there are two main areas that we need to focus on, mainly the offense uh, aspect and the defense. So uh, you know, the, there are several measurements that you could measure how a team, how strength the uh, a team from the offensive aspect as well as uh, on the defensive aspect. So uh, we have gathered, uh, so we thought of gathering data around the offensive strength, strength and the defensive strength. So with that in mind, we thought of like building a model, machine learning model, uh, that would uh, basically identify some kind of a relationship from the offensive strength and the defensive strength uh, in, order, in order to predict the winning probability. So basically the machine learning model that we're going to build uh, uh, is capable of identifying some patterns uh, or correlations from the offensive strength and the defensive strength uh, into the winning probability. So uh, then we started to search data. Uh, then uh, you know, there, are, there were lots and lots of uh, sites, but we found the profootballreference.com uh, uh, has a good amount of like the in very informative stats on the Super Bowl. So uh, we thought of going with them. We had to collect. There were like a lot of tables. Uh, and we had to collect uh, data manually. Uh, so we collected data for like few past years. Uh, so these data is like based on the offensive strength and the defensive strength of uh, teams. And these are expected data. And also these data more more on the like the general season data, regular season data. Uh, the research for selecting the regular season data was like uh, we could have selected the uh, uh, pre-season data, but the issue with the pre-season data was uh, when, when the teams started to play the pre-season, they do not put the, you know, the full strength, strength uh, in, in you know, strength and, strength and teams into the player, uh, into the pre-season games. Um, they basically use the pre-season games to uh, identify uh, good players and basically select, try out different combinations and select the best teams out of the players available. So hence we thought of like using the general season data. I think uh, you know, due to those facts, uh, general season data are like the most correct uh, set of data that we could uh, we could uh, use for machine learning model. So and also like when the team started to play the general season, they are more intense. They are more focusing on uh, winning the game. So uh, that's another factor for selecting the general season data. How we build the uh, machine learning algorithm? Uh, so, uh, as, you, as, as you already know, that uh, what we're going to predict is the winning probability. And it's a numerical value. Uh, and the data set that we're going to use is the, it's a supervised data set. What that means is, uh, you know, we know the uh, winning probabilities based on offensive strength and the defensive strength for a set of teams uh, and also for past few years. So what we needed to uh, needed to get to know is the algorithm type. Since the response variable is a numerical value, and the data set is supervised, the algorithm type that we're going to 
In the Super Bowl case, what we needed was a numerical prediction algorithm. So for that, what we picked was a random first regression algorithm. We analyzed all the other regression algorithms as well, but we found out that random first regression performs very well. So the model we built was using WS2 machine learner, and this is a this is the high level architecture of the WS2 machine learner. Let me try to brief you on the high level architecture as well. Uh, so uh, we support several data source types. So uh, for, for WS2 machine learning, you could upload data sets uh, from different data sources. And it can be file system, or it can be a hard distributed file system, or the WS2 data analytics server. And uh, inside the WS2 machine learning, we have a concept called projects, machine learning projects, where you would uh, logically prove a set of machine learning analysis uh, that you would perform on top of your data. So once you perform machine learning analysis, uh, you would generate a machine learning model. And uh, in order to build, in order to provide the machine learning algorithms, what we use is Apache Spark ML Lib library. And also in order to get the deep learning algorithms, we use H2O AI library as well. So uh, we expose every every operation of the WS2 machine learner via a REST API. So uh, once you build the model, you could use our predictive APIs uh, via you, you can call them our REST client, or uh, as we, we have written extensions uh, to WS2 complex event processor, as well as WS2 enterprise service bus, where you could use these built models uh, for prediction at real time. So uh, this demonstrates how we predicted the uh, game results. So we basically, this is that kind of a deep, kind of the deployment that we have done in the Super Bowl case. Uh, so uh, we deployed WS2 Machine Learner in Amazon EC2 Cloud. And uh, basically, uh, we have built a machine learning analysis using the random forest regression algorithm and exposed the using the WS2 machine learner, we have exposed uh, WS2 ML predictive API uh, for the model that we have built. Then uh, we written a wrapper API, you know, another API, test API that is specific to the big game. Uh, big game rest API was used to get the team names and also to get the uh, like the eliminated teams and get the percentage values comparing two teams. Uh, and I'll be going through an example where you probably realize the importance of the big game best API. And uh, finally, we built a, a website 
uh, you could uh, drag and drop two teams and then uh, call, click on a credit button uh, to perform the real credit charge. So let's see what happens when you click on the credit button. Uh, team, you know, the names of the two teams that you have selected go to the BitGM REST API and then the BitGM REST API would uh, delegate the request to the WS2 machine learner predictive API by passing the two teams names. And the WS2 machine learner predictive API would give you the probabilities as it you know what it was running is a, a numerical prediction algorithm, right? So uh, what it would output is a probability, a value between zero and one. So at, as you can see, team A has got 0 0.67 and team B got 0.33 probability. Then the big game rest API would convert these two probabilities into percentages and would send to the uh, front end. So at the front end, you would not see the probabilities, but you would see the percentages. And uh, we use the BGM REST API to upload new data as well. So uh, we build this uh, Superbot prediction API, and uh, we exposed it uh, the site. We exposed the site uh, before the playoffs uh, get started. So uh, while the playoffs are going on, there are new data that are generated. So you need to keep updating the, you know, the machine learning model based on the new data as well. So we use BitGame REST API to basically pass the new data into WS2 machine learner in, in a, a correct format. So the final result was the Big Data Games, uh, the website that we built. And uh, so here you should see the three, the uh, playoffs three that we have built. And uh, we have got uh, seven out of 11 uh, games credited correctly, but we, uh, we did not able to credit three, four matches correctly. Uh, three matches are due to uh, uh, one team, uh, then no ground course. Uh, they, uh, unfortunately, they didn't like, play that well during the uh, general season in 2015. So uh, the model did not have enough uh, evidence or enough uh, evidence to prove that the no ground course has a good set of probability to become the winner. So that's why uh, you know we have misclassified or misprediced incorrectly uh, these three games. So while doing this, we have faced few challenges as well. Uh, one challenge was the domain knowledge. Uh, there were few few of our team members who our family would be like uh, American football, but uh, yeah, if we have more insights into the domain, uh, domain or the American football game, we could have done much better. So you, know, you could do a lot of data pre-processing, feature pre-processing, if you know uh, the domain very well. And one of the challenges, the lack of data. Uh, so uh, you know, there are data like, um, you know, in different, different sites, but you couldn't find, you know, very informative data uh, uh, in like most of the sites. So you have to traverse and do a lot of manual uh, data gathering. Uh, that was a very uh, tough task as well. And uh, the impact from injuries. So uh, when it comes to Super Bowl, the injuries, the player injuries, play that key role. Uh, you know, especially if the quarterback is a is quarterback got injured, uh, there's a high chance of that particular team, uh, you know, becoming second 
during the game. So, uh, but you know, finding the injury data was very hard. Uh, we couldn't uh, basically get uh, find any uh, you know informative data on injuries, so that we you know, we could have used it to uh, the model that we have built. And also the game day conditions like the weather and also uh, you know the home home advantage those are hard to model as well since what we basically analyzed was the historical data it, it was kind of hard to analyze uh, get them into uh, the machine learning model simply because the data was not like collected properly. So if you are interested in getting started with your own predictions, feel free to download or visit our uh, the machine learning product that page. And uh, and also we have a comprehensive documentation uh, at this location and also there are few webinars coming up as well on different machine learning algorithm types, uh, algorithms and the features of the WSD machine learning. So that's it for the session. Let me check whether we have any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can just ask so that I could explain a bit more. Please send them uh, the chat. So this is a good experience for us. We uh, I think we gained a lot of traffic to the WST machine learning product page as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is a good way to like basically uh, get the WST machine learning name out 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 in the like uh, US community. And I think you know, similarly, if you start to uh, Looking to the predictive analytics aspects, we could probably uh, you know, leverage these uh, tools and build build something useful that would probably help you to gain some insights into your data and also to build uh, or gain some revenue out of it as well. Yeah, I think uh, we don't have any questions. Let me wait another minute to see if we get any questions. Okay, I got one question. How did you clean or prepare the data for pre-processing? Okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, so the question was, how did you clean or prepare the data for pre-processing? Uh, yes, so we did uh, some amount of feature engineering uh, using the data analytics server. So WS2 has an analytics platform, uh, which is basically you could send events to the WS2 data analytics platform and then could perform all the uh, all sorts of analytics. Uh, for an example, you could perform real-time analytics. You could perform batch and predictive analytics, and also the interactive analytics. So uh, we, we basically leverage the those functionalities at the WS2 data analytics server. So we published the data that we gathered into WS2 data analytics server. 
and then kind of uh, reprocess the clean data using uh, Spark SQL queries as well as uh, the Lucene uh, indexing queries. So that's how we did, we did the uh, data preprocessing part. Uh, and there's another question on is the big chain REST API custom built for this project or is it commonly available? So uh, the big chain REST API, that part is a customly built uh, API because that is very specific to this particular big game uh, scenario. But WC2 Machine Learner offers a predictive API that you could uh, use. So as I said earlier, like WC2 Machine Learner exposes all its operations via REST API. So uh, you could still call this predictive API here uh, and get the probabilities. But we we needed the BTM REST API because we had a user interface besides in front of the you know uh, BTM REST API and user interface required uh, percentages. It required uh, different different like the eliminated keys and all these. So those functionalities we had to implement a, a specific uh, REST API. So this is a custom built one, and it's it kind of hard to make it available commonly. Uh, but uh, as I said, WC Machine Learner has a predictive API. So our prediction is available via our REST API. So there's another question on how you scope down how decided that what kind of features may cross to this app. Okay, so uh, yeah, when we collected the data set, uh, we had this idea like uh, we needed to focus on the uh, offensive aspect and the defensive aspect. So there could be other features that we have missed or we didn't uh, take into consideration, but uh, you know, the data data is playing a key role as well because it's hard to find data that you, know, uh, you want always, right? So you have to deal with the amount of data that is available to you. So uh, we collected a lot of features using the pro uh, reference, pro football reference that comes out, uh, and we basically tried different things. We tried all the features and then we uh, do the feature eliminations and see whether it improved the uh, accuracy levels and then also we do some uh, principal component analysis kind of uh, analysis as well on the feature set and create a, a new set of features. So uh, feature engineering played a key role uh, as well uh, when we build this uh, tool. Uh, so all those things we currently WST machine learning does not support PCA principal component analysis. We had to do it uh, you know manually uh, using some other uh, custom code. But yeah, so we did uh, a certain set of feature engineering engineering. Uh, to identify the correct set of results. So we predicted quite well, like we predicted seven games correctly out of 11. And there's another question, how did uh, WSO2 select which algorithms should be supported by WSO2 ML? Are the algorithms also used by competing products? So the first question, uh, how did WS2 select which algorithms should be supported by WS2 uh, So we basically uh, identified a key set of areas that, uh, that you know, people have some need. So especially uh, if you take the machine learning space, you need to do some numerical prediction. 
so that's why we have our identified set of algorithms that should be in this particular category and also classification. So uh, then there are binary and multi class. So we identify set of algorithms that are commonly used uh, by the data scientists and the machine learning community. And we basically, uh, yeah, that's uh, like main criteria of selecting algorithms and areas. But the, you know, we are focusing on providing natural language processing uh, techniques as well. Uh, that's why uh, those are in our pipeline. So yeah, for as of now we have picked uh, different machine learning algorithm types based on the needs of people and uh, based on the requirements we uh, got from people. And uh, are the algorithms also used by competing products? Uh, I think there are, there are competing products who expose a certain set of algorithms, but the key differentiations of WS2 machine learning is like it's part of a platform, a part, it's part of a data analytics platform. So you publish only once and uh, then you could perform all the four types of analytics. You could perform batch real-time predictive and interactive analytics. So you publish once and do all these analytics. And also we, the WS2 machine learning, you know, is not tightly coupled to Spark and Lib or the uh, H2O AI. So we, we have a pluggable runtime. So you could plug any other runtime as well and leverage those algorithms too. Uh, within WS2 machine learning, so uh, we have we have taken a lot of algorithms from the Apache Spark ML, but for the deep learning support we have used H2O AI. Um, yeah, I think I answered that question too. And also one other differentiation would be like. You could use WC machine learning anywhere, so you, you, uh, you don't need to have a cloud environment or you don't need to have a, you know, a specific set of infrastructure. But uh, we leverage this Spark, uh, Spark runtime. That inherently means that it is you know, 100 times faster than normal Hadoop distribu distributions. So uh, you, if you need to perform machine learning in a scalable and you know fast manner uh, you, you should probably try WS2 machine learning. Uh, we basically give you a, a wizard a user interface that you could easily build machine learning models and also we help you to manage take your data as well as uh, basically create the machine learning analysis and compare machine learning models and all these are supported by the WS2 machine learning. I'll have to go on if we have any more questions. Good. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's all the question we, questions we got. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, I think we, I can wrap up now. Uh, so thanks for joining uh, the session. Hope you found it useful and hope you, you know, try WS2 machine learning and see how you could leverage them in your organizations or in your like predictive analytics requirements. Thanks for asking all the questions and I appreciate it and hope you had a good, uh, good time. Uh, so uh, hope to see you in the next webinar as well.